buttons here. So bear with me just a second while we get all of our media connected. There we are. I think we're ready. <laughs> and as soon as I see people telling me that they can hear me, looks like it's all working, I will pop up on your screen. So bear with me here. Uh, just a moment and we will get going here. Let's see. Yes, I see somebody over on the, the Facebook feed. Let me just make sure I can get us over here. And there we go. All right, everybody. I have a fun thing for you today. Not only do we have a great project, but I think you're going to like this. All right, I am on in three, two, and one. Here we are. This is an Alfie mask. That's right. I hope you all are wearing your masks out there in and around, uh, because as we know, our COVID isn't going away. But we thought that it might be kind of fun in our Society6 store, as you know. Uh, we have a Society6 store that has Alfie tote bags and a bunch of fun stuff. So um, here it is. Here's the Alfie mask. We have also our um, uh, I'm the Boss of My Beads, I think, is on there too. So you can see. But if you want to wear, if you want to be uh, socially conscious, right, and good with your social distancing, and you want to sport Alfred T. Pickles, we have them. I saw them on Society6, um, and uh, I thought, oh my gosh, masks, that's going to be awesome. So I had to get, I had to get one. So you can see it's printed. It has a little opening for a filter if you want to do it. So our Society6 store, if you um, go and the mugs are there, the Alfie mug. I should have my Alfie mug. It would have been a twofer, but I have my Nespresso mug instead. But, you know, um, it looks like Drea got the Society6 uh, link over on our Facebook feed. And it looks like Janice got it over there on our YouTube feed as well. So you can see what we have. But, you know, I thought, why not make wearing masks a little more fun? And it's bit, it's good. It really fits nicely. Um, you can breathe fine, right? It's fine. I could, I could wear this Alfie mask all day and it kind of goes with my ensemble. Anyway, so I wanted to share you guys, uh, with that. Alfie is very proud of himself to have it on there. I know that not all of you are cat people, but so many of you are, but there's some beater masks and stuff there too. So, um, I hope that when you go out, you're masking up and this Alfie mask uh, is a good way. I was trying to get a photo of Alfred actually wearing the mask, but since he doesn't go out, he's like, I'm not wearing one. So anyway, uh, good morning. As I said, good morning, evening, or afternoon to all of you guys. Uh, it's great to have everybody here and up and running. Um, I hope that everyone had a good break uh, on Friday. We were off um, to celebrate um, U.S. Uh, uh, Independence Day and to kind of take a little rest. And um, uh, so today we're back on it. We're back with this really fun project that I'm going to share with you. I've got some great notes from Janice that we're going to go through. It's really awesome. And um, you can uh, also jump right over to our website, beadshop.com, uh, to see everything that we've got here. Um, but I'm going to show you the project. Uh, first, though, and Nancy's asking, is a store listed under Bead Shop on Society6? It is. It's listed under Bead Shop. Um, and I think that Drea uh, posted it a little bit. Um, yeah, she just posted it again on the on the Facebook feed. So thank you so much for, um, for that, uh, for all of your support with that. Um, and it's kind of fun to get some of your Bead Shop swag. Um, so on uh, Friday, we dropped this really fun, beautiful um, piece by Brittany. It's Brittany's Macaw project that she did, and many of you saw that in the, in the, um, 
in the newsletter. So that's up and running for you guys to look at. Okay. And um, today the Across Cultures is also up there as well. Okay. So you can check it all out. I'm going to show you this and we're going to delve into the project in a few minutes. So um, let's jump in and get started. Uh, this week, what we've got going on though, just to mention, with this Across Cultures, we also have a fun project coming up on Friday with Free Tip Friday. So I'm going to circle back to that at the end of our broadcast as well. Um, I wanted to also give a big thanks to our buddy Francesca Watson. I don't think Francesca is watching this morning. Sometimes she jumps on. Um, she has a studio over in Bulverde, Texas. Um, and uh, it's called The Makery. And The Makery, uh, she does broadcasts Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday live from her studio. Great metalsmithing stuff and stuff. So she had me as her guest this past Thursday, I think it was last week. And it was really fun. And I did a little knot for her and I showed them, you know, you guys, we do a lot of silk wrapping on here. So I shared the silk wrap um, project with her and uh, it was really fun. So thank you so much. Those of you who joined us uh, from our Facebook live feed for Bean Shop, thank you so much for joining me over there. And you can give Francesca a follow over on the Makery. Um, she does really cool stuff. She's doing all kinds of things uh, over there um, that are metal related, so it's great. So it really, um, so what we're doing here at Bead Shop, since it was so fun to have like a guest on, right? Or to be a guest on someone else's show, right? So, um, we're practicing. Emily and I have a date tomorrow to practice our split screen. And then Janice and Brittany and I have a date to practice as well. So, because you know what, this, you know, it's, we're not going to be hanging out anytime soon, right? Our social distancing protocols are still in place. So, but we really want to bring you guys, um, we want to bring everybody back together through this kind of great virtual um, medium that we have via Facebook and via YouTube. So um, we're going to be trying that out. So Emily has a beaded bead um, project that she just can't wait to share with you. She's like, girl, I'm in. So uh, we'll be we'll be heading that up. So um, hang in there and we'll be all back together, at least virtually, um, as soon as we can. So stay um, uh, stay tuned to your newsletters for more of that info. And <laughs> Michelle is saying on the broadcast, you saw me use my fabric scissors to cut leather. It's true. I had no other cutters. I did the broadcast actually from home, my kitchen table where I'm making masks. I'm doing a whole bunch of donation masks, um, uh, ramping that back up. And <laughs> all I had were my sewing scissors. So I just grit my teeth and use them to cut the leather. But the leather was pretty soft, so I'm going to pretend that that never happened. Don't tell anyone, right? So, okay, so that's what we've got going on. That's what we're thinking about and coming up. So let's take a look. You know, I don't know about you. It's the middle, almost the middle of July, right? And uh, with the summer, I'm feeling like I have a lot of cabin fever. I don't know about you guys, but, um, you know, Chris and I are really trying to do the socially responsible thing and keep our social distancing in place and not seeing family and friends. And it's rough, right? I can see my mom said hello. And this is where I get to see her every week. She gets to see me, but I don't get to see her. Um, and so it got me thinking about projects that make you feel good right? And doing things that make you feel good and are comforting, right? And this project, this Across Cultures project, is a super comforting project for me. Number one, when Janice um, did her first one, and when I was away from Bean Shop, and those of you who know, I'll give you a little bit of backstory here. Um, I started with Bead Shop in 1992, right when we were a brick and mortar store and I really had never touched a bead before in my life right and I to make a really long and amazing story short um, 
I was hired by our general manager at the time, Winnie Vanderen. Winnie is an amazing artist. You've heard me talk about her before. Janice was away. She was like in Portugal or something. She didn't even interview me, right? So uh, I I started, I was going to get a job to kind of, uh, I was going to go back to college, get my master's degree, maybe think about teaching. You know, I didn't know. I left my job at Apple Computer. I said, no more. I need to to kind of come in and 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 do something uh, creative and I'm just going to go back to school so I can teach. So um, instead I got this job at the bead shop in Palo Alto, California and it was, it formed my life for the next 10 years of my working life, right? I was 26 I think when I started with Janice. So this Across Cultures project we have been doing in some format, Janice has been doing it since she opened the store really in 1982 and this to me it was one of the first things I made uh, necklace wise and I wanted to like wear as many beads as possible right because <laughs> they were I just loved the beads and we had such beautiful beads in that darn store just still holdovers from Janice's mom Lydia um, pieces that Lydia had had in her store antiques etc um, you know, pieces that we, Janice has been working with these vendors since she was, you know, I don't know, what do they say, knee high to a grasshopper, right? Um, she, and so we had these really amazing, amazing beads, as we still do, but it was a little different in having a store, right? A brick and mortar store. And those of you who still have brick and mortar stores, bead shops near you, you know how fun it is to go in there and see your people and touch your, the beads and do all this fun stuff, right? So, um... So this necklace, the, the across cultures type necklace, was kind of a staple in our bead shop um, oeuvre, right? And it was one of the first things I ever strung, and I strung it on wax linen then. And I remember it was a piece, I still have my first piece, I need to dig it out, it's in my archive, which means it's in a plastic box back in storage. Um, but it was so freeing to be able to string that piece, to like just pile the beads on and just wear them, you know, like a like a statement piece. And I didn't I didn't know anything about designing. I still, whatever, I fly by the sea of my pants all the time, right? But it really was fun and engaging to make a piece like this. And so when I say that we need pieces that are kind of comforting, this is the kind of project that I mean. So when I left the bead shop, I opened my own store in San Francisco called Bedissimo. It was good times. Um, that had its run. And then I made my way, circled my way back to bead shop here in 2016. So I had always kind of, though, kept an eye on what Janice was doing, right? Because we'd hang out over the years. We'd have lunch. We'd, you know, connect. How's the bead business for you? Great. How's the bead business for you? Great. You know, what are you working on? What What am I working on? And I saw in the blog, like way, I don't know, I don't know, it was years, years and years and years ago, that Janice had, uh, she posted this Across Cultures piece. And it's actually this one, this red one here. And it's still up on our website here. And I saw it and I was like, holy cow, that's, that's the neck, that's, that's it, that's, that's advanced stringing, that's the one. Um, and so it really, I hadn't picked up beads for a while because I was super deep into metalwork and I'm still super deep into metalwork, but now I'm also super deep back into beads again, right? Beads are your first love, they never, li they never leave you. So I saw this piece and I'm like, holy cow, I love it. So that's what you've seen me um, uh, show this piece before and I'm gonna show it again. I've gotta grab it off of the mannequin that's sitting here because I didn't have enough room, though I have now projects falling all on the floor here. But that project, this Across Cultures piece, uh, spurred me on, does, uh, really inspired me to make this piece here. And I'll show it to you a little more up close when we're working on pieces. But it kind of returned me to my roots, right? To my, to my jewelry making roots. And so I pulled out like a bunch of random stuff, beads. I have my beads, they're still, they're in a big printer's cabinet with all in drawers and they're all kind of out there. And the drawers are all by color. 
And maybe I'll do a, a show from home sometime and, and show you that. It might be kind of fun. Anyway, um, and I just pulled stuff out like at random and threw it on the beadboard and made it, right? And so this piece, this new Across Cultures that Janice did called Baked Earth, she's done some different things that we're going to look at a little bit. But this is a real staple, a real staple in your skills, in your, you know, in your, in your stable of skills here. This one is one that's really for the ages because you can adapt this. It can be a bracelet, super easy, or you can adapt it to a longer piece. And I did this on a free tip Friday a while back, which it's the same across cultures, but it's necklace size, right? Like this. Okay. So that's, so this is a basic. So what I'm going to share with you today is we're going to go step by step through Janice's instructions and I'm going to kind of point it out where it is on the piece, kind of like the project map that's on the website. And then I'm going to show you a few essential tricks that I want to make sure that you have down that I'm going to demo. Okay, so first let's go back and look at some of the other inspirations. Let me see if I can find where I put my glasses because we're not going to get far without that. But again, this is a real, I think, a, a, a comforting um, project. And I know a lot of my friends on social are posting a lot of interesting uh, pieces that they're doing. My one buddy, Marsha DeCoster, you may know Marsha. She's a very, very gifted and prolific seed bead artist. Um, she's been doing a lot of knitting now and a lot of sewing. And so uh, it's interesting to see how the beads, her bead aesthetic, um, kind of goes across all of her different, uh, you know, her, her knitting and, and her beadwork. Um, I know Emily's jumped on. She's over on the Facebook feed. And you know that Emily also, Emily does a lot of different, you know, has a, a lot of different bead styles. And I was actually talking to her this morning because we were um, chatting about um, the, the split screen, right? Um, and Emily's like, I'm going to watch you today and I'm going to make stuff for, because Emily's doing a lot of jewelry sales. So, you know, Emily's kind of working with uh, a lot of different techniques and stuff as well. So I think that when we are, especially in times like these, when we have some extra time, um, some of us don't have as much time as others, but um, if you take a look and pull out your pieces, and start to drill down into what you like making and you know what really resonates with you. Um, creating a piece like this, I think is a great exercise in just kind of creating, working with thread and designing and stuff like that. So, um, and everybody's saying this across cultures, this is one of the first pieces that they've done. And if you haven't worked with thread or if thread is kind of, um, intimidating to you, this is a great way to start because it's just a bracelet. You're not stringing things. You're not stringing a ton of stuff, right? You're not jumping in and making a huge necklace. So so anyway, that's my long-winded story to tell you this project, it feels really good. The results are great and it makes me feel like coming home, which I love that. I love that feeling. So let's go over here to this mess on my table, okay? And I had it all nice and then I... <laughs> And I started to to throw things over there. So we're going to look at these notes here in just a second. It's so great. Janice is so meticulous and she sends, you know, her samples with these nice little maps and stuff. So it's, you know, I don't have to do anything. I just have to show up and be the talking head, which is great. So here are a few of our um, former, our older um, Across Cultures pieces. The thing that these all have in common is that they're all strung on various um, styles of thread, right? You could string it on Ceylon, like this, right? You could string it on CKC, or what we like to, for short, Chinese knotting cord for long, right? The point four would be great for that. And what Janice used, you could also use the, the wax linen, right? What Janice used was she used tough cord. And the tough cord is awesome. We've been carrying it for a long time. 
Um, and it's great. I uh, This tough chord, uh, unfortunately, due to kind of COVID limitations and stuff, the supply chain of tough chord isn't uh, great right now. So we do have some in stock. We have some various colors in stock. If we run out of the gold number three or using tough three, you can uh, just just substitute whatever you dig, right? And you can try try out different things, okay? But this is the tough cold cord in gold. Looks like Gita just joined us. Thank you, Gita. She's over on the Facebook feed as beadshop.com. And Gita, when I flash on to say goodbye to everybody, you'll see I'm wearing my beloved scarf that you sent me. You know, I always have it here in my desk. Um, so if I need to accessorize quickly, I can throw it on. So I thought of you today as I tied it on. So you'll see it. So thank you again for my lovely scarf all the way from Denmark. I love it. Um, I also pulled a couple of other projects that I wanted to share with you that are similar, that have this same kind of feel to them. Okay, so let me take these out of the way. These are all on the website on beadshop.com under Across Cultures. I wanna pull this one in. This is one that Emily did. Again, with the Padre beads. And you know, again, I should have looked to see <laughs> what it was. But I know you guys will link it. I know someone will link it out there. This is one that Emily did. I think I was away teaching or something back in the days when you could travel and teach. Um, and this has the Padres. And you can see Emily used, I pulled it because she used the wax linen here on this. And then she connected it to um, the Compassion Suede, the, the faux ultra suede lacing that we carry. But you could use um, leather cord, you could use the deerskin lace. Um, there's a whole bunch that you could use here. So, um, but this is also a great one. And you can see it's adjustable with the, um, uh, with the Pony Express beads. And that's how you make it longer or shorter. Okay, so that's uh, that's this one here, which I just love. I grabbed this one only because, you know, in Janice's original Across Cultures, she used a ton of Hishi beads. And the Hishi beads are these, again, it's a bead shop staple. It's this little round, flat saucer bead that are made in Africa. They're a West African bead. I think they're from Ghana, I think. Um, and they are just delicious. So this is a bead that's been made for, I don't know, hundreds of years probably. And I used it in this piece and I mixed it up. I did this on, uh, on a free tip Friday, I think way back in the day, I think when we first got these English cuts in. And I wanted to show you how the stack of the Hishi beads looked so nice. And this is just, I don't know, maybe it's like a 20 and 22 inch necklace there. And this is strong on soft flex, actually. But mixing the, and I think that's kind of the, the cool thing about this cross cultures piece is you can throw just about anything in there. So this is the cut beads, the 10 millimeter English cut, which is a traditional Czech glass bead mixed with that traditional um, African uh, bead. Um, I just love it. And so you can really mix things up with this across cultures piece. I'll show you one more thing. Oh, Karen, thank you. Karen made such a nice comment over on Facebook. Um, you've watched many of my videos. Well, thank you. I hope that they were helpful. It's nice to have you watching today. Um, let me put this guy here. And you've seen you've seen this one before. I trot this guy out periodically. Um, but it just, it works on so many levels for me, right? It works as a great color, um, color paletting um, piece. Um, it also shows, you know, some asymmetrical stringing. Um, but again, this is very similar to this um, across cultures kind of piece. Okay, so um, as I say, the techniques that we're going to be going over today can be adapted uh, into many types of, of uh, stringing styles, right? So 
Um, yeah, it's a good piece. It has some of my some of my very favorite beads in there. Really old school um, German glass. Some um, amber pieces in there. It's pretty nice. And this guy here, this old um, uh, African trade bead, which is beautiful. So, um, okay. So let me get to um, let me get to our piece. Bear with me here, just a second. Let me go to this mess on my table. Okay, let me uh, zoom out here a little bit with the camera so you guys can see. Let me get my phone out of the way. And let's first take a look. I pulled some random stuff that I wanted to show you. On Janice's piece, what she used is she used the Padre beads and she used the, this is the um, cinnamon spice colorway, okay? For me, seeing the Padre beads on a strand like this all mixed up, and usually I like stuff all mixed up, but seeing it here, it kind of jars me a little. I don't know why it does, but it does. And so I, consequently, I've never, my hand has never really grabbed these kind of multicolored strands of the Padre beads. What Janice did, I think, was genius. She color blocked. I'm going to get in a little bit tighter. Let me get this out of the way. She sorted the beads, a la Ali Mori, or many of you who like to sort your beads, right? She sorted and she put the light tones on one side and the darker tones on the other side, right? Genius, I think. That immediately, I think, elevates this, I don't know if elevates the right word, but helps to make me, it helps my eye to start thinking um, about designing with these, right? So I think that's great. So get your Padre, we also carry them, I pulled this one, these are our mushroom colorway which I also love and I think these would be really great to um, to sort out and use as well okay we've got uh, uh, blue strands we've got we've got a bunch that have this multicolor so I think it was really fun okay so then what she also incorporated instead of the Hishi beads she used this brass uh, bead that we call temple and it looks like a little gear, almost. It's kind of hard um, to see in this with the camera. Maybe if I pull it back a little bit. Um, but you can see, or maybe if I zoom in, I need that macro to, there we go, that's better. The macro shows up. You can see the little, kind of the little lines on the sides, right? It looks like a little gear. And they're a little, um, there's a little bit of variation in shape with these, which I love, okay? So with this then, Jan, whoops, wrong way. She mixed those up and used them as her spacers and used them as her spacers on both sides, okay? And then she also used, these are kind of a long tube bead that are known by wampum, the name wampum beads. Um, and you can see they're kind of, bright in this baggie so let me um is that is temple your favorite bead tammy it's one of my favorites too i love it it is a great stash builder it does look like a tiny squash blossom beads cindy you're exactly right um so here's uh the wampum bead and this is essentially like a big bugle bead right with a big hole um, and so Janice used those in this side here and as well as in the closure. I brought a couple of other uh, colors that we have in the aged wampum. We have it in just this brick, which is this brown one that's in the mix. And then we have it in this turquoise metallic Picasso, which is beautiful. And it has kind of a Picasso um, finish on it. These are all Czech glass, these beads. and so. When you get these check glass beads, and I 
grabbed a few other ones. This one we call Aged Rustic Earth. This is also a 6 aught. Uh, and this 6 aught is um, also has that matting on it, right? This would be a great one to use. It's the Aged Rustic Earth 6 aught. When we get these from the Czech Republic, these uh, sometimes they're called um, uh, e beads, right? Uh, or six aught in this case. Five aughts are usually called um, e beads, I think. Uh, but sometimes these this size is is called an e bead as well. And sometimes the colors really vary, right? On these, so if we run out and we get new ones in, sometimes you'll see a slight color change. You'll see that in these wampum beads. You'll definitely see that in these um, turquoise Picasso. We've had some that are really green. We've had some that are really blue. The Picasso coating on these are really super silvery. Sometimes it's a little more gray or a little more brown. Um, but that's just kind of the adventure with these coatings with the check glass beads. Because again, they're still made kind of in small batches. You know, they're still um, artisan made. Um, although they're, you know, uh, the, the techniques may have changed a little bit with advances in machinery, but not that much, honestly. This one is the Aged Yellow Dark Travertine. It's a 4 aught. It's a little bit bigger. And in a couple of weeks, I'm going to do a free tip Friday on bead sizes. We're going to look at all the seed beads and talk about the sizes and stuff. But this travertine, this coating over that yellow is really gorgeous. And that's the aged yellow dark travertine. It's a four aught. So what I'm trying to get at is essentially you can jump in and use just about anything. It's a great one for stash diving for sure. Now, this is also a great one for color paletting. Um, this piece that Janice made is pretty neutral, which I love, right? It has this, the, the brown Padres and the natural Padres, but you could pump it up with any kind of color. And I don't know, I guess I'm feeling color today or I need some kind of distraction or I need something happy to happen, right? So I grabbed these. Um, these are really um, fun, these, what do I want to say? They're sand cast beads. And these are our, um, someone throw up the link, it's escaping my, my brain at the moment. Um, but the sand casts, these big ones, we've used them in a lot of different pieces. These would go, I think this blue looks really, really beautiful over there, okay? And you could also throw in like an I Ching coin or something like that because you know how I love these so much. But it really makes for a great neutral background that you can throw something in. Again, I threw the sand cast here. I also, as I walked by, I grabbed this butterfly in the serpentine, right? Which I love, right? And this could just simply be knotted on with a couple of strands of um, Irish wax linen. It would look great. I also have here, I'll show you, these were from a project from a while back. Let me get these needles off of here. These are the 8 millimeter rondelles. I think this is still from when I did the wire Olympics way back um, a few months ago. But even look at this color, right? This really beautiful color here of the, um, I'm going to get in a little bit tighter there. Right there we go. How that just kind of gives it kind of a different personality as well, right? So you can add something a little more rustic or a little more shiny. I also grabbed these are some more sand cast. These are our Ashanti saucers. These Ashanti. We've used them in a lot of projects. Especially if you wanted to elongate this piece into a necklace, right? And have some kind of interesting things going on with it. This is the mustard bark in Ashanti. But any of our Ashanti, maybe not the pink, but maybe you could add something to build the bridge to the pink Ashanti. Um, I think would look great, right? And I love them stacked. 
We also have them in wood, the saucers. They're a little bit smaller, which I love, right? This one is these ebony. It's an ebony wood. It's called No Ending, I think, this one. I think those look great. Again, if you're elongating this into a necklace, these I think would all be great choices. These are our more sand cast. We call this one Bingo. It has a yellow and white dots on it. It just looks gorgeous. So all of those can be um, incorporated if you want to elongate this into um, a bigger piece. And you can see on the necklace that I did, I just tied on, I used the I Ching coin as a button, I just tied it on with leather, okay? had the leather come through the I Ching coin and then tie it at the top and it just comes in and goes around like that, right? Same thing Janice is using on this piece here. She's come in and she's made the the loops. This is really just kind of a longer version of this here, right? And also here. But you can see everything just runs, all these strands run up through a big bead. And where I just came through and did the loop, this is the side that Janice used for the button. And we're gonna, I'm gonna walk you through this so we can see this. Okay, so let me put, let me clear the decks here a little bit and let's take a look at the actual project. But I wanted to give you some ideas in hopes that it fuels and, you know, kind of ignites some creativity uh, and just spend some time auditioning the beads. You know, sometimes I think, I don't know, maybe it's just me lately. I'm just going to, I'm going to talk some truth right now, right? Uh, sometimes I'm just too darn, like, brain tired to think about, you know, creating or getting in that creative mode. And so sometimes just creating um, color palettes like this or getting your hands on the beads and saying, all right, you know, what are my options here? What can I make? I can make a bracelet, I can make a necklace, I can make a pair of earrings or whatever. Sometimes just the sheer joy of paletting with your beads, um, I think can help, right? It doesn't have to become anything, right? You can put the beads right back into your stash, or you could put it all in a bag and, you know, tackle it another day when you feel like you're ready, you know, your fingers are ready to string. So don't, um, don't let it get you down. Just get your hands on those beads and just color palette, even if you don't feel like stringing. I think it'll help. Okay. You can also go to Across Cultures. Uh, there's a really great um, handout for it as well that Janice generated when she first did the project. This one is going to differ a little bit from that, okay? So uh, let's take a look at it. Here is, so door to door, this bracelet. I like to start with the length so you can see what it is. And when I say door to door, it will be at the end of the loop to kind of the middle of the button. So this is about seven and three quarters, okay? And if you make something that's slightly too large, you can always twist a little bit right and then put it on and that twist will take up a little bit of space okay so this one especially when the piece is a little bulkier um, I like that um, I like that it's a little bit bigger so it has a little bit more movement to it when it's bulky like this and you're you know if you're typing or doing things if it's if it's um, tight it's not very comfortable so this one you might want to make maybe a quarter inch longer than you might normally make your piece okay so let's take a look at the notes Janice sent me uh, page one and page two let's look at page one here. And I'm gonna lay this out and and let's go through it now these are kind of the highlights that, that Janice wanted you to know. So let me get these clips off of here so this lays flat. There we go, that's better. And I'm gonna zoom in just a little tighter so we're nice and tight here, okay? So let's start with this side first, okay? This one. 
Jana says this section right here is a one continuous strand. It's about 14 inches long and it's on a single strand of tough cord. Okay, so essentially what you're doing is you're restringing a long strand kind of like what the Padres come on like this. Okay, and essentially this will be like four strands or whatever, but essentially you string it all up and then you um, you just fold it into thirds or, you know, if you wanted four, you know, six strands, whatever, however many strands you wanted that side to be. But she did 14 strands, tied it off, dab of glue, I'd use the GS Hypo, and then you fold it over, okay? So it kind of looks like this. And then you'd set that aside, okay? Then what Janice did was she did this section, this clo this this closing section, and I wanted to point this out to you, that this section right here, um, you know how we use that um, trails end closure with the, with the leather, right? I don't think I have one here to show you, but you've seen it before on some different pieces that we've done. Essentially, it's kind of like a figure eight in leather that's then silk wrapped or macrame in the middle, okay? This is a um, kind of the same idea, right, as a, as a figure eight. And I see that a lot of you guys are saying how you'd really love to have a sample of this. What I'll do is I'll go ahead and I'll scan it in the scanner and I can turn it into a PDF um, and we can um, add it. I'll put it up in the links in, in the group. Okay, on the bead table. Okay, um, but I can I can scan it as a PDF pretty easily. Um, but stay tuned to the our bead table bead group, and uh, this will be in there. I can also send it over to Karen. I'm sure she can add it to the project page too. But it's kind of fun to have this write these Janice notes, right? It's kind of cool, right? So I will, um, Janice is saying that she can, if you send her an email, she can forward it to you. But again, I'll make it available in the group, okay? So that's, that's easier. So JP, you don't have to keep um, emailing it. I'll, I'll put it in the files, all right? Um, so essentially, this is kind of like a beaded trails end. It's the same thing, okay? It's, if you really look at this, you can see it has that same figure eight kind of, you know, shape to it. But here, instead of doing just one loop like this that might look kind of skinny or kind of small, Janice did it double like this, okay? So it gives it a little more visual weight, though one loop would have held this just fine. The visual weight of this, I think, matches the visual weight of this doubled over strand or tripled over strand here, okay? So the way that this is made is you you cut, and I have them here, I'm going to show you this, I'm going to demo this this part. You cut two pieces of tough cord and you string your little beads that go around this, right? And then you bring them together under a bead, these both strands come underneath a bead here, come underneath a bead here. These two strands go under one of those long bugles, those long wampum. Then they all go under a big bead. And then what Janice did to kind of shake things up here, she macrameed instead of doing like a strung loop like this one might be. And can you see here with the shadows, I actually put some of those slice of life beads in there to add a little bit of extra. Okay. Um, what Janice did was she macrameed instead. So the way that this is done, again, that single strand comes through, these beads are strung on it, then that double strand goes up through the wampum, and again, that double strand up through the long bead here, through this faceted barrel, and then all four of those strands come out, and she used those to macrame. Okay, so two strands are underneath here, and two strands are the right and the left cords for the macrame. All right, pretty easy. Uh, so that's what she did. Two separate strands of tough cord with the metal beads, uh, bring four strands into the gold bead, macrame a button loop, end it by the gold bead with a little bit of glue and thread zapping here. 
I might even, it depends, and I didn't grab one of those gold barrel beads, but you may be able to even bring it back through, though, I don't know, you might, and instead of tying it off here, tie it off down there, or use the strands for dangles here, if you wanted, okay? Then, uh, number five, repeat the technique on this side here, okay, using the Padre beads. Not each loop to secure separately, okay? And so what she did here, you can see, it's that same thing where she came around. And see how right here, Janice tapered. So she used the 11 knot, the uh, gilding mat 11 knot. You can use any 11 knot that you have or a little small two millimeter bead or whatever works here, but she tapered it so that when she came in, she could tie that knot there, then tapered back out and then strung. What she did on the other one was she strung this charm from Green Girl right on there, okay? And it hides the knot, okay, easy. Then instead of those two strands going under the wampum like they did here, the two strands are just individually strung. Okay, then they all come up underneath this king size shadow. Then, uh, and it's randomly done. Bring all the strands together into the king size shadow. Then Janice macrame, and I'll show you this back end of the button here. She just, again, with those four strands, macrame, macrame, macrame. When it was time to put the button on, she just went through, those strands just went through the shank of the button, all four of them, and then she continued to macrame, and then she closed it off with tassels, right? So these, what you could do, uh, she added a little bit of glue here. You could also tie a knot, an overhand knot here, or silk wrap it here, if you felt like you wanted it to be a little tighter or closer in. And then these beads are just on here. They're just floating, right? And wouldn't this, if we look at it this way, wouldn't this make, just this part that I'm holding here, wouldn't this make a great earring design, right? Button notwithstanding, or put the button on, make a loop and attach that loop to your ear wire. Wouldn't that look great, right? That's it. But I really love the line of these beads, how nice they look. So it would make a great tassel, right? So that's it. So let's look at Janice's page two here. And that's where she talks about this button. Macrame through the button shank. That's number nine. Number 10, add a drop of glue on the top of knot. And what she says here, and I'll read it to you. As you finish the last three knots first, put a bit of glue on your center cord right and you've seen me do that before you put a bit of glue on the center cord and then you macrame over the top and then that glue you can add another dab of glue if you want okay nice and nice and tight um uh, it'll keep things nice and tight then you're going to separate each tail and add a few beads and with the small bead down here that's the 11 knot you're going to do a double knot at the end right make a loop and travel it through once travel it through twice Tighten it up to the very bottom so it hits that 11 knot there, right? And then you're going to singe the ends with the thread burner. I like to add a little bit of glue, a little bit of hypo cement at the end, let them sit, and then you can clip or singe them away, okay? And then it, she says here, when you put button through the button loop, you don't need to also bring the tassels through the loop, okay? Um, and Janice says here, Please also see original Cross Cultures handout. Um, it's very good. I did the button loop differently from the original. Okay, so it's a little bit of a different way to close it. So let me show you how this looks closed. Here's the tassels, right? And you don't have to pass the tassels through. This just sits this way. Okay, really nicely done. Really a very pretty closure, I think. So let me show you how to kind of do kind of, I'll call it kind of the beaded trails end or the beaded figure eight knot here, the closure. Because you could use this on a wrap bracelet. I think you'll use this many times, 
okay so I've strung my loops and I've made this I just grabbed these are I don't know some, one of the blue Padres maybe the new blue gray I'm not sure but I had them sitting in this little dish so that's what I used I made my loops arbitrarily I didn't even measure what Janice did um, you could make your loops a little bit smaller if you want um, especially on a bracelet it's like every you know quarter of an inch or eighth of an inch counts what you're doing right because you don't have that much real estate to string if it's a necklace you've got a little more leeway okay so uh, for the the figure eight that's this portion right here okay so I've strung these on this is the tough cord uh, the gold number three and if this were a bracelet right or maybe even a necklace but you could you probably want to attach this section at this point where you would get whatever it is you would have you would have strung and you're going to put it around this way okay i'm not going to do that i'm not going to fill this up because you could do it afterwards or i might use this for something else it'll just be a little bit easier for me to handle okay so that's that so you want to get these kind of to the center point of your thread and you could use the zap glue on the ends if you wanted right and Janice is saying just string enough beads so they go around the other section without cinching them too tightly you do want them to flow you do want them to have movement here so if it's too tight here if this band of beads is too tight it's not gonna let this have nice flow to it so again this is about two and a half inches I think of what I what I strung so now you want to get and I'll grab these guys here this the long bugle maybe I'll do it in a contrasting color I'll do it in those two darks and we're going to bring um, our beads, our loops, and for now I'm going to treat these as separate pieces. I'm just going to get these two and go through. Now if you wanted, this is where 11 knots really come in handy to taper down a little bit if you want. You don't have to. That nestles pretty nicely, but you could. Okay. Then I'll do the same thing for this one. Now, there's those two. Now, you need something that has a big hole, okay? And that's why I grabbed the, the sand cast piece. I don't know, this teal is my mom's favorite color, and it's kind of becoming one of my favorites as well. I don't know. It's also one of Chris's favorite colors. I just think this super saturated blue is so good and I'm going to grab one though the hole doesn't have to be super big but it has to be big enough so you can get all these strands through so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to send everything all four of these strands and if your strands are different lengths just come and get them all together at the end so they're all the same length and you're the boss of that bead hole you're just going to come in and sometimes these sand cast pieces, they're a little more tapered at one end than the other. So I'll use the flat end towards my beads and the more tapered end towards where I'm going to macrame. Okay. So then uh, I'm going to lash this to the board and we're going to macrame. And can you see how great this would be at the ending of, or the beginning of a wrap bracelet, right? You could make this portion and then you could come in and attach, you know, do some macrame around there, around your leather, split your leather out and start to do your wrap or whatever. But it's, it's just a good staple to know. So I'm going to grab some kitchen twine off of our nice little kitchen twine ball here. And I'm going to <clears throat> tie a knot. Pass that loop through 
through the beads. Let me go out just a little bit so you can see me do this here. Let me get that out of the way so it's not too distracting. Come in. And if I want everything to hold together, see how these are kind of, they're kind of loosey-goosey right here? It's kind of bumming me out. What I could do before I do all this is I can come in with all of these cords and tie a knot. Not too tight. You don't want these to be super stiff and not have any drape. You want them to be visually tight, but not so physically tight that they don't flow. There we go. So see how this now holds everything in place. Let's go back and put that sand cast on. And I don't want to trim these threads. I have some really long threads here and a pair of shorter threads. The longer ones are what I'll do my macrame with. I really want to clip them so they're not so long, but I don't want to run out of thread. So be generous with your thread cutting. So again, here I'm going to go kind of into that flatter side and go in and close this off. Okay, so whoops. And of course I have a little knot there. Bead all to the rescue. Get inside that knot. If you know how to tie knots, you need to teach yourself to untie knots as well. Okay. Let's get that unknotted. It happens to the best of us, especially on a live broadcast, right? There we go. And I like the tough cord. I don't, a tough cord isn't something I reach for a lot either. And I don't know why. Um, maybe because it's in the other room and I'm lazy to go get it. Maybe that's it. I don't know. I don't know. That could be it. Um, but I like it. It's a little stiffer than Ceylon is. Um, not stiffer. It just the hand. It has a little bit of a different hand to it. It just does. So, um, so it's nice to experiment to go with something that's a little bit different. Now you can see on Janice's piece here, the hole in this um, faceted barrel isn't gigantic. It's big, but the hole in the sand cast bead is definitely bigger. So you could if you wanted, and let me see if I have a bead here. You could get kind of a small bead that has a bigger hole if you wanted to pull everything kind of tighter up against here. But I I don't think I'm gonna do it. I think I'm just gonna macrame, okay? So I'm going to, in the center, and I'm just gonna to continue to use these um, Padre beads here. I'm going to grab some of these and I'm going to string, let me see, how many? Two, four, six, eight, nine. Janice used nine. So I hold both of these ends together. Let me get a little tighter in here now. There we go. And I'm just going to string these on. Okay, so I'm going to do this. And again, you can zap glue the ends or you can use a needle, but this is just thread like this. It's not going to make um, make too much of a difference and we want to go a little bit faster here. So this is how many? That's four. And the Padres have different sizes, so you might want to make sure like this one's kind of long. Maybe I want one that's a little shorter or rounder. I don't know. But it's something to think about as you're stringing them. That's two, four, five. Six, seven, eight, and nine. When you're making your loop, you also want to have decided what your button looks like. Okay, so you could get this far, right? And you could say, okay, I'm going to string the other half and get the button on, right, this side. And then I'll come back and do the loop to make sure it fits. Or you could just have your button already chosen, and as you're making the loop, um, just make sure it fits over the button. Okay, either way. So now uh, let me zoom out here again so you can see how I'm doing this on my board. I'm going to come here, and on the end of my board right here, I'm going to get one of my clampers and clamp that down. 
So I have a nice tight, the, my threads are nice and taut here. Now, sometimes lifting this up off the board using a little spool of something or whatever kind of makes it a little bit easier for you to, to macrame under. So let's see what JP did here. It looks like she just jumped in. So I'm going to come in and just start my macrame and I'm going to start from my, I don't know, it doesn't matter. You can start from your left or your right. It doesn't make any difference. And we have a great tutorial on how to do the flat macrame, but essentially a pair of these half hitch knots makes one full macrame knot. So essentially what you do is you create that loop. That's my left hand side, that loop there. That loop goes over the center cords. Now with my right hand, I'm going to go over that left hand thread, under the center cord, grab it up through that loop, and tie the knot, okay? And I'll repeat that on the other side. See how I make the loop? And my fingers just automatically, I make the loop, my fingers just automatically kind of come in here and grab, right? Let me get a little tighter so maybe you can see that a little more tightly, how I do that. But it really does become second nature. So a pair of these half hitch knots becomes one full square knot. See, I bring that under, I just get my fingers in there and pull it. On beadshop.com, Brittany has a great uh, macrame basics. I'm getting a little carried away because I just love to do this macrame, so I need to bring a bead down. Okay, so I'm going to bring a bead. And I've given myself, I don't know, maybe that's like a little less than a quarter of an inch. Maybe it's more like an eighth of an inch, maybe, um, or so because as I come back around the loop, I'm going to re-macrame over the top of this, okay? And I don't think Janice the large bead's going to move around. I'm going to actually do my other macrame, and I think it'll be wide enough so it'll sit. And then with since this bead hole is so large, I'm going to actually bring my strands down there and tie it underneath here. But you could end it here if you're using a bead that's not so large. Okay, so the hole isn't so large, but let's experiment and see what happens. Now, since I've been talking, I've kind of forgotten where I've ended my macrame or which side I put down. Okay, so the visual cue for that, and many of you know this already, but if I look at my macrame, okay, and I see that little scallop that's right there, I know that, okay, if that little scallop is there, that's where I make my loop. Okay, so it'll it'll be symmetrical. So I'll come in, I'll put a push a bead up, then I'll make we call this the P, right? The P side. And then I'll come here and bring that over. And then I'll go to the Q side, which is the letter Q here. Close it up. And then I'll do one full stitch in between. So that closes that knot, and then I'll make the two half hitches, one and two. And I'll slide that bead down. And you can decide if you want your loop to have fewer beads, make more macrame stitches in between. And then do a full stitch. Let me pull that down a little bit, slide a bead up. It's nice to have your beads pre-strung here so you don't have to start and stop and unclip and reclip and do your thing if you just have them pre-strung. It's very a la our poetry project um, or our Born Yesterday project, both of which are great if you dig the macrame, easy, simple macrame. Um, I have a project kind of on the back burner there that I want to share with you. I'll be coming up using this very same technique. There we go. That one and this one. Bring up another. We're almost there. I feel like I've missed one. Yeah, I need one more knot. There we go. That looks right. Bring it up. And I know that. I knew that I was short one because I had brought my bead up and I was starting my knot on this side. Uh, with this, I'm always, once I bring a bead up, my first 
strand that I tie with is the right hand one, not the left hand. So that gives me a little bit of a visual cue. There we go. And it's pretty. This also would just be pretty if we would just, I don't know, this is the start of all kinds of things going on here, right? Um, what Melanie was also saying, you could just pop a Padre bead right there to kind of close everything up. You could because the Padres have a nice uh, large hole. I think I tied that one incorrectly. It needs to go on this side. Yep, there we go. The knot's nice and flat. I can tell that that was off. Let's push that up a little bit. I really like the look of this gold tough cord and these blue padres. Kind of soothing. Kind of a nice color. So we're almost there. I'm going to put one more up and then I'm going to double check the size of the button because again the padres vary in length so nine beads on my piece might be too long for what you've got going on just depending or too short you know so you need to check it. So I'm going to check it after, oops, that didn't go right. I'm going to check it after I put this last bead, or the second to the last bead on, so I don't have to unknot. Hopefully I don't have to unknot anything. Okay, so tighten that up. And I want to shout out, give a big shout out and a big thanks to all of you who are watching today. Um, it's great that we have so many new people joining us on our Bead Shop live um, YouTube stream. Uh, we really appreciate all of your support. The more likes that you can give this video uh, when it's up, the thumbs up underneath the video on the YouTube page or share it or all of those things, we really, really appreciate it because without you guys here, we would not be able to continue to do what we love. So thank you so much for that. So I'm going to kind of close this up, put this together, and you can see my beads indeed were a little bit bigger. So eight beads for me works here, right? With Janice's beads, hers were a little bit smaller, so the nine beads worked, okay? So now I'm going to come in, and can you also see how when I bring this together, I want to show you on the side, See how I don't have two Padre beads hitting up against each other here? How there is a little bit of macrame there so that the beads kind of nest and don't displace themselves. Okay, so I actually want, I want one more, I'm just going to put this to the board real quick. I just want one more, um, let me clip this down there. I just want one more knot just to give it just a touch more clearance before I close it up. There we go. Okay. So what I'm going to do is now I'm going to get my, oh, you can't see that at all. Sorry, let me widen this up. There we go. So now I need to lash this back down. So I'm going to do that by because again, remember for effective macrame, let me unclip it, for effective macrame, it has to be taut. The threads have to be nice and taut on your board. And I'm using one of our deep dish trays. They're coming back in, you guys. Again, COVID has kind of interrupted the supply chain for these, but we found a place to get them that's the same quality. We use the ones that are wood covered with the paper, not the plastic ones. So we found a good source for them. So they'll be back in soon. I'm sorry, I know that it's been frustrating to wait for them, but make sure and put yourself on the notification list so you'll get an email as soon as they come in. But again, things are things are different now. You know, sometimes we have to wait a little bit longer um, for supplies to come in. So we appreciate your your patience on it. So now you can see here, I'm gonna come in and this is going to kind of nestle right there. And I'm going to turn this so my cords are coming up from the bottom. And I'm going to attach these cords again to my board with my clip. Can you see that right there? You can. 
And then I will bring this down, not too tight. This is the sticky part where you want it to be, you've got to lash this at just the right place because we really want this to sit exactly where we want it. So let me put this to the board. These to the center. Yeah. That looks about right. See how it's coming together right there. So I'm going to place this at the top. I want to make sure that my loop isn't twisted. And I'm going to come in. You know, it may also help if I have this lash down as well. If you have too much movement when you're trying to do this, nothing is going to stay put. And you want your macrame stitches to be nice and, and even, right? So I'm also, if you had the necklace here and stuff already, you could clamp that down, but I don't. So I'm just going to put another piece of kitchen twine or stray piece of leather cord or whatever you have, right? And I'm just going to attach it with another clip real close to that first one. There we go. So it's pulling everything, not, not too tight there, but it's holding everything nicely in place. Let me readjust. I mean, you could do it without clamping it down, but I think it's a little bit easier if I do clamp it. Let me clamp that center. There we go. Alrighty. This big bead is giving me a little bit of sass, but I'm just going to work with it. Okay, let me get tighter. Okay. And I'm just going to macrame like I did before, but I'm macrame over both of these. Okay, so I'm going to come in, I'm going to make my loop go under all of that business there and back up through the loop. And when I make my first knot, it'll pull everything into place. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to clamp both of these cords together under one clamp so they're kind of laying on top of each other. There we go. Okay, and let me just macrame, macrame, macrame. The first one might be a little loose, so you kind of have to maybe tighten it in two steps, where I've got this one that I did that came undone. So let's tighten it. Sorry, my fingers are in the way, my big old fingers. Let me get some skinny fingers. And then I'll come in and tighten this one. But once you get your first stitch, there we go, into place. Oh, there's a little bit of loose thread there that I don't like. So that's all right. You know what's also given me sass here? Let me let me let me talk about this. What's making this hard is that this thread right here keeps pushing this bead. All the way around. So I'm going to put this through because this bead hole is so large that I will be able to pull the put all of these strands through and knot them below. There we go. Now see nothing is moving around. It's a lot better. So let me adjust this again. Sometimes you just have to go with your gut, you know, if it's not right. There we go. So now all of this will come back. Let me get a little wider here. Okay. I'll tighten everything back down. But see, now it's all running in one direction, one, one nice plane. So it'll be nice and tight here. There we go. That is so much better. And of course, I have to choose a bead that 
you know, gives you grief, right? But it's not going to daunt me. Who's the boss? Who's the boss of this bead, everybody out there in Facebook and YouTube land? Me. There we go. Now it gets in nice and tight. So let's macrame that down. There we are. Okay. And you could use your macrame board. Jackie's saying that maybe it might be easier on the macrame board. I think it's fine on this deep dish. You just kind of have to, you know, um, secure it down with your cords, and I think it's all right. Before I take it off the board, I'll give you a nice, good shot of how it's all connected there, and then we'll take it off. But I'm uh, just going over that original macrame. Okay. There we go. And I want it to be nice and tight here. So, um, because I don't want this sand cast bead to jump over my macrame. This could also be um, a silk wrap. I'm going to go one more. This could also be a silk wrap here if you wanted it to be. Now I'm going to check it, okay? Because again, I'm just I'm doing this. What a surprise! Right off the top of my head, see how that does that hole is big. It just comes over the top. Now we have a couple of things that we could do here. Now with the bracelet, let me get Janice's piece here side by side so you can see it. So she really did it tight, right? And you have this um, this. Uh, this kind of shorter piece and the bead that has a small hole here. Now let's say that maybe this were a necklace closure or something, I don't know, right? And maybe I wanted some more tassels or something there. What I might do here is I would come down and I'm going to come through. I think I need a needle for this one. And I'm just going to go through that hole. Again, you can um, avoid this by adding just a little padre bead or a little, uh, a small bead with a big hole that acts like a stopper. Okay, so I'm going to put these through. Now I could, um, Let me show you something before I do that, though. Do I have time? Yeah, we're doing good on time. Let me get this cord out. If I wanted to make this macrame heftier or heavier, right, I'm going to turn this around. I still have my threads here, right? Let me see how just coming back and macrameing back up one more time actually works. It'll give me a nice big shank on this. This side. Or I could have added another thread and done this macrame with it too. Okay. Now, this is where Janice says you can add, and I could end this right here, and see how now this no longer wants to go through, right? Which is great. I think it looks great. Then I can come in and what I should have done was add just a little bit of glue before I tied this last knot. Let me see if I can, I was doing such nice firm knots that everybody wants to stay where they are. Let me see if I can persuade it. Yeah, there we go. Once you get your all underneath there, you're able to, to get it. So I'm going to just come in 
get my little baggie. And get that on there. And finish up. There we go. Okay. And I can add a little extra there and I let that sit. Okay. That's all she wrote. Now what we'll do, and I would let that dry, right? Dry, dry, dry. Overnight. Let me get that shiny bag out of there. And then I'll come in with my thread burner. and burn those ends away. Okay. And then here, on this end, I have these spare ones. I can use them as, um, as dangles. I'm going to turn it around so I can see it a little bit better. Or I can just come in. I could also macrame it around, or I could tie a knot. But let me tie a couple of macrame knots just to see how it looks, okay? There's that. I'm really feeling it right now. And that one. And yeah, I could add another macrame be um, another macrame strand to tighten it all up. But you can see here, I just tightened it with just a few little macrame knots. Add a little bit of glue. Where did I end? I stopped that side, I think. And there we go. And I'll do one last pop of glue and then thread burn that sucker away. That's it. So this would make a good, and again, I'd wait overnight, but I'm just going to do this now to make it clean. This is a great closure, not only for, and I show you, I said I'd show you how it goes on the board, not only for this across cultures that Janice did, and you can see mine, it's a little bit larger, right, because I wanted you to be able to see it. You'll scale it more to your bracelet size. But this one is perfect for using on a multitude of projects, right? So here it is, like a little figure eight, and it's ready to go, okay? For a necklace, a bracelet, whatever it is you're looking for, okay? So I hope that you guys found it to be um, helpful. But this is, the, this is the part I really wanted to break out so you guys could see it. So remember, you can find, I will, uh, these directions, I'll go ahead and scan them and I'll put them up on our um, bead shop, the bead table group, and I'll send Karen the PDFs to see if we can add them to the, uh, to the project page. Um, so you guys will see that in the next couple of days, right? Um, but I hope that you enjoyed this foray. I, I really did as well, Janice. This was such a beautiful project. I think that it's, again, a bead shop classic, a bead shop staple, right? Um, it's pretty awesome, I think, for it. So uh, if uh, you can find everything, we really super appreciate all of your likes and your follows and your your. Um, you're subscribing to our newsletters, all of those things, right? Um, and you can jump right on to beadshop.com for information on the project and the products from this broadcast. You can sign up for our newsletter for all the latest discounts, giveaways, and new products. And you guys are not going to want to miss the newsletter that comes out Friday morning. 
I have been working on something for you guys. It's been like, I don't know, three months since pre, uh, pre-quarantine. And it's, we're finally going to drop it on Friday morning. I know that you guys really, really like my special mixes. And this one is going to be super special. So I'm going to be working with it on the Friday broadcast on um, Free Tip Friday. Today is Wednesday, July 8th. So that is going to drop on uh, the 10th. Friday the 10th. If you're watching this on a rebroadcast, I'm sorry that special mix will probably be long gone, but at, um, uh, if you're um, watching this and you uh, jump on and subscribe to our newsletter, you'll get that in your box. And I'm going to be watching, uh, working with it on Friday. So thank you, thank you, thank you everybody. I'm just looking at everybody's comments. Thank you so much. It was great to have all of you all here. You can find us every Wednesday and Friday here on our beadshop.com YouTube channel as well as on our Facebook channel at 10.30 a.m. Pacific Time. Again, we thank you so much for these shares and uh, likes and support because again, without you guys, um, we would not be here doing what we love to do. Um, I saw in the comments that many of you Grabbed your Alfie mask from our beadshop.com Society6 page. So thank you so much for that. And uh, stay healthy, wash those hands, wear those masks, practice that social distancing because together, if we work together as a team, like we do every week here on this broadcast, we will get through this happy and healthy and safely. So thank you again so much for watching and I'll see you guys Friday at 10.30 uh, a.m. Pacific Time for Free Tip Friday, working with my special mix. Thanks so much, everybody. See you then.